welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and I'm so glad you decided to join me for another video. Today I'm showing you how I embroidered this fill stitch Batman design onto this plush towel from Target. I'm going to show you what materials I used, how I centered it and floated it on top of my 5x7 hoop. Um, and yeah, I even had a needle break, so I'll show you how to change the needle too. So this is the final product and I'm very happy with it. So let me show you how I did it. Okay, so here are the materials that I have. This is the bath towel. I took the tag off and then was like, oh shoot, I probably should have left that on until I was done with my introduction. But I just got this from Target. Um, it's not like a threshold brand. It was on clearance, um, but it's really thick. It's really plush. It's really soft um, and it's black because I'm you know, going to be making my son a Batman one. So I thought black was perfect. And then this is wash away stabilizer. Let me see if I can do this one handed and show you just kind of what it looks like. So this is wash away stabilizer and I, um, accidentally bought this and I'm lucky or glad that I did so that I could make this video. So this is what I'm going to be using in my five by seven hoop. So these are my materials today and I'm going to be using black and yellow satin thread and um, I think that's it. Okay, another material I forgot to mention just now is my basting adhesive because I am going to be floating this because I will float every chance I get. <laughs> so I'm just going to put this inside my hoop. And then there my hoop's really dirty, so I often have to uh, scrape and find the arrow, so that's nice. Pull it tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my towel and it is already folded in half one way. So something fun about this towel is it has a little um, like hook thing right in the middle. So I'm going to be embroidering on the bottom side so that when we, um, you know, hang it up, the design's on the bottom and it's not like upside down on the top. So um, I thought that was a kind of cool thing with that towel. So if it didn't have that, then obviously it wouldn't matter which side I do this on. So I'm actually going to do this inside out this way and move this around. So with this having the hook on the inside, I usually a towel doesn't have like an inside or an outside, you know, usually it like doesn't matter. Um, but since this is on the inside, I flipped it inside out so that when I put it onto the hoop and I open it, it's going to embroider on the top. If that makes sense. So I'm just making sure it is folded uh, perfectly in half. Obviously I would like to avoid getting it off. So now I'm going to spray this with my basting adhesive and I'm just gonna do it over here away. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently slide this under. And actually I'm going to I'm going to put it to where where it hooks onto my machine is facing the inside of the blanket so that there's not a lot of bulk up in the throat of my machine. So I do the same with my blankets too. Whichever way I can create less bulk inside my machine. And I'm not, I don't really have like a precise measuring for how far I'm doing it from the bottom. I just know I'm doing a big Batman design. Um, so I just want it towards the bottom. And so I'm just lining it up on the line that's on the bottom and on the top of my hoop. And then I'm just going to slowly fold this over and voila. So now I'm just pressing it down. And I know it looks like the line <laughs> is off the middle, but I know it's centered because I had it folded perfectly in half. This is just how it was folded wonky 
all that time. So I'm trying to not let that throw me off. <laughs> Something else you can do too if you want to triple check your measurement is either go from the edge of the towel or usually they have this um, this line right here. So I'm just going from the inside of the line all the way to the inside of the line on the opposite side of the towel and that is 44 inches and so I can see 22 is pretty darn center in the middle of my hoop. So I'm really happy with where this is at so let's get our machine. Okay, so now I'm just going to carefully load this onto my machine. Lift up my foot to give me a little bit of room. Trying to not move the towel on the hoop since I'm floating. There we go. Work smarter, not harder, Kayla. So see what I mean? So now I can have the bulk of the towel on this side instead of jammed up here in the throat of my machine. So it's going to make embroidering a lot easier and a lot better. And I'm actually just going to fold up the sides of this so that it's not hanging and putting any weight, um, you know, pulling on the design at all. Um, so I think we are ready to go. I have my yellow thread in here and um, I'm going to bring you over and show you the design and then we'll do a time lapse and then talk when it's all done. Okay, and so here is my design. It is a Batman design and it is, it, it, ugh, excuse me, it is a complete fill stitch design and I actually was not anticipating it to take an hour. Um, so definitely going to make a lot of cuts in this time lapse. Uh, but yeah, so I have my yellow thread ready to go and I should have shown you this before but I actually put in a brand new bobbin because I didn't want to run out because that's a long time <laughs> so I have a brand new bobbin for both my yellow and I have one ready for my black um so yeah so let's embroider this towel and also I forgot to mention because my mind is all over the place today I am putting water soluble stabilizer on top um, I do this also with my minky blankets. If you've watched any of my minky blanket videos, you've seen um, this is because this has, um, you know, the long hairs, the long fibers. So this is going to help the stitches keep the hair down and not show up through the stitches. So I always use water soluble stabilizer when I'm working with towels or minky blankets or fleece or anything that has long hair, long texture like this. So I'm just going to um, lay it right under there. I've seen people use like scotch tape and tape it down. Um, I usually just leave it once it gets the first couple of stitches going. It doesn't shift or anything so I usually just leave it. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay, so that was fun. I broke a needle and I am almost done. Let me show you. I am, uh, little focus. I am almost done. I have like 400 more stitches and I break a needle. Like, are you kidding me? 
So I'm going to change this real quick and I figured I would just show you um, how I do that. So let me get these broken needle pieces out of the way. My fat fingers will let me, there we go. I didn't want to pull on the thread, but it's okay. I'm going to go back in my stitches. So I'm just going to cut that. I am going to loosen this little black knob right here. Loosen that and then pull the what's left of the needle out. So you can see it broke it real good. And then these are the needles that I use. See if they can focus. So they are just the, there we go, the 7511 needles. And so I am just going to, without moving my thread too much, with the flat side, let me show you, see the, the needle has, this is the top part, there's a rounded part and then there's a flat part. The flat part goes towards the back. So you're gonna put it in with the flat part towards the back. And then, I have fat fingers guys, that's why I don't usually do this on camera. <laughs> And it's hard to do it when the camera's right in front of you. Okay. I'm actually just going to get the thread out of the way there. Okay, and then just holding it with my left hand, I'm going to tighten this black screw on the side. And then I'm going to re-thread my black through the needle. Okay. Put it up there. And then I'm going to lift my foot down, but let me show you what I'm gonna do over here because it broke part of the way through. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm gonna hit this button down here and I'm going to go back uh, probably, I'm, I'm keeping an eye, sorry, I have you on my tripod so it's kind of hard to move you. I'm keeping an eye on where it is over here where it's moving to see how far back I want to go. And I think, I think I'm pretty good right there. I might go back just another 10 stitches because it broke quite a ways back. It kept going. It didn't stop like it normally does when I break a needle. So, so I just did that. I hit the, my camera does not want to focus, hit negative 10 and that's how many stitches it want you are choosing to go back. So then I'm just going to hit okay. And then I'm going to go back over here and start again. Okay, so here it is all finished. I think it's stitched out great. You can still see a little bit of the water soluble stabilizer, but I know that will come out when I wash it. And here's what it looks like on the back. And again, once I tear this out, um, it will, whatever's left will just wash off when I put it in the wash. So all in all, I am really happy with how this turned out. I think it's stitched great. It came in three different sizes and I did the six inch size. Um, I didn't have to resize it at all. Um, a little bit of the yellow showing through like right there, but it's for my son, so I don't really care. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and this, this right here is where, get it to focus, where my needle broke. I mean, I can notice it, but my son's turning six. He's not even going to care. He's just going to see Batman. So I am really happy about this. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have embroidered on towels before. Um, this is the first big towel that I've done. I've done plenty of dish towels um, and even like the, the smaller tea towels, like the thinner tea towels. Um, but this is my first time doing a big plush towel, and I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out great, and I think my son's going to love it um, at his birthday next month. So let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in my next video.